Hi everyone, welcome back to Simple Harmonic Motion. Today we're going to be talking about simple pendulums. Alright, so simple pendulum is an idealized model consisting of a point mass suspended by a massless, unstretchable spring. Okay? This is the formula for a simple pendulum. Period is equal to 2 pi, square root of the length of the string, divided by the acceleration of gravity. Let's move on. Uh, let's look at this conceptual example. When a body is oscillating on a horizontal spring, passes through its equilibrium position, its acceleration is zero. When the valve of an oscillating simple pendulum passes from left to right through its equilibrium position, is its acceleration zero to the left, to the right, upward, downward. So again, what we're going to be doing is it's going to be oscillating back and forth like this. We should know the equilibrium position is going to be right when it's at the middle right here. Okay. There's going to be a force of gravity acting on this and a force of tension. And uh, you might think, okay, these two are equal to each other, so it's going to be zero. However, we should also know this is in uniform circular moving motion. It's moving in this arc. So this force of tension is going to be more than this force of gravity. And there's going to be this centripetal acceleration going upwards. So it should be upwards in this situation. Okay, moving on. Find the period and frequency of the simple pendulum one meter long at a location where gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. So for this problem, we should be looking at the main formula, 2 pi, the length of the string, divided by gravity. Let's just plug in those numbers. Length of the string being 1, divided by 9.8. And this should give us a period. Let's see, 2 pi times square root of 1 divided by 9.8. And we should get an answer around two seconds. That's the period. And we should know frequency is one over period, or in this case, frequency is one over two, which is 0 0.5 hertz. Okay. So this is saying that every two seconds, this makes it full cycle. Okay, makes it full cycle every two seconds. Moving on. A simple pendulum has a length L and a mass M, so it's the period T. If both L and M are doubled, what is the new period? Again, if you want to do these kind of conceptual questions, you can always draw them, which I would suggest. But the main thing is to look at the formula. So look at the formula that has what you need. So 2 pi square root of the length divided by G. What this tells us right away is mass doesn't matter. And mass shouldn't matter for pendulums. And the reason for that is because uh, gravity acts on all objects the same. So whether an object is very heavy or very light, the mass of an object is the same. That being the case, we're going to see that the length does double, and that does matter in this equation. So if this doubles, we should notice that this changes by a factor of square root of 2. If it changes by a factor of square root of 2, we can see that our answer should be C. Okay, it increases. Okay, moving on. A pendulum clock on the surface of Earth has a period of 1 second. On a distant planet, the length of a pendulum must be shortened slightly to have a period of one second. What is it true about the acceleration due to gravity on this distant planet? A, gravity is slightly greater than the Earth. B, gravity is slightly less than the Earth. C, gravity is equal to the Earth. D, impossible to tell. Again, let's look at the formula. So we have period is equal to 2 pi, square root of the length, divided by gravity. So what we know is this period is going to remain the same. Okay, the, the length of the string gets shortened at this distance planet, so this lowers, but the period remains the same. In order for this period to remain the same and this length to decrease, that means that the gravi gravity has to decrease proportionally. These, these two have to decrease the same amount. So gravity in this distant planet should be slightly less than Earth. Okay, okay. Uh, moving on. A simple pendulum has a length of 0.24 meters, is placed at an angle of 3.5 degrees, and released. How much time does it take the pendulum to reach its highest speed? Okay, so first let's just kind of draw this out. So we have a pendulum like this. Say the angle is 3.5 degrees. First off, we should know the highest speed is when it reaches its uh, equilibrium position here, the V max. That's the fastest speed. We're trying to find how long it takes to go from here to here, the time. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to find the period. So I know period is equal to 2 pi L over G, the length being 0.24, and gravity being 10. We're assuming we're on Earth. 
So let's figure out what the period is. Uh, 2 pi times square root of 0.24 divided by 10, and we get 0 0.97 seconds. So this is how long this pendulum would take to go all the way to the other side and all the way back. That's 0.97 seconds. So this t here is just going to be one-fourth, because this is one-fourth the journey, then another fourth to get to the other side, and then another fourth to get back, and then another fourth to get all the way back. This is one-fourth of the period. So it's going to be 0.97 divided by 4, which gives us a time of 0 0.24 seconds. Part B now says how much time does it take if the pendulum is released at an angle of 1.75 degrees. So again, if we look at the formula for the period, for the period we see that's L over G. We see that um, the am amplitude or the angle has nothing to do with the formula, so it has no effect whether this is 1.75 or 3.5. The period will remain the same, so the time would also remain the same. This is also 0 0.24 seconds. Okay, moving on. Uh, let's look at this problem. A pendulum is graphed with an angle. Oh, sorry, it looks a little bit bad. Uh, angle with the vertical the string makes with the vertical as a function of time as shown in the graph. A, what are the period, frequency, angular frequency, and amplitude of the pendulum? Okay, so this is angle with respect to time. We can see that this is going to make a full swing. So it's going to get to the 6 degree angle. Uh, the time it takes to make the 6 degree angle back and forth, that's the period. So that's going to be, the period is going to be equal to 1.5 seconds. Okay. Uh, you can find that period by going from trough to trough, or the bottom one here, or from here to here. Those are all going to give you the period, uh, which is going to be 1.5 seconds. Okay. The frequency, remember, that's the inverse of the period. So we're going to do 1 divided by 1.5, and we should get 0 0.67 hertz. That's hertz. Angular frequency. Remember, angular frequency is equal to 2 pi divided by the period, 1.5. So this will be 2 whoops, pi, whoops, sorry, sorry, 2 pi, should I keep doing something wrong? 2 pi divided by 1.5, and we get 4.19 radians per second. And then the amplitude. So when it comes to the amplitude for a simple pendulum, it's just the angle here. So it's going to be the 6 degree angle. Okay. How long is the pendulum? So we want to know how long it is. Uh, again, we know the formula for pendulum for the period is 2 pi square root of L over G. We know the period. We found that at the beginning, 1.5 seconds. 2 pi square root of the length, that's what we're looking for, and gravity, which is 10. So, putting this in my calculator, 1.4 divided by parentheses 2 pi. Make sure to put that parentheses there. A lot of times, it's gonna, the calculator is going to think you're multiplying. Times squared, times 10, and we get a length of 0 0.57 meters. Lastly, is it possible to determine the mass of the bob? No, it's not. Again, it's not in the formula. So... This graph here, it shows that no matter what the mass is, whether it's 5 pounds or 5 billion pounds, it's going to be swinging the same amount, okay? So, no, it's not going to help at all. And that's pretty much it. Next time, we're going to be talking about physical pendulums, which are slightly, uh, not even slightly, it's going to be a lot more difficult. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you with the next one.